This is part two of two of motion record settings for a DAWA XVR series digital video recorder. In the first video, I showed you how to change the default 24 seven continuous recording to motion record only. In this video, I will show you some more detailed settings. So let's get started. First off, let's right click any place on the screen, navigate to the main menu. Once you are in the main menu, click Alarm. On the left hand side, make sure you have selected Video Detect. By default, the first tab in this screen is Motion Detection and it should be highlighted blue. In our previous video, we enabled Motion Detection on all channels as indicated here by the blue slider. What we will do now is set Sensitivity and set Motion Masking. To do that, come over here to the top right of the screen and you will see it says Region. Click the setting box beside Region. This now shows your camera's field of view and you have a bunch of cool red squares and you've got another programming window that says Sensitivity and Threshold. For this particular recorder, default sensitivity is 80 and Threshold is 0. And this is 0 through 100. Sensitivity is how sensitive the system is to a pixel change or motion change. And threshold is the amount of change the system needs to see before it decides this is a motion event and it records the event to the hard drive. What I would recommend is to bring the setting down between 60 and 65. This is a good place to start. Um, you may need to adjust up or down to account for the particular scene your camera is looking at. Also, the threshold, I recommend increasing to 8 to 10. The reason for these changes, especially in outdoor scenes, is to keep leaves and clouds, insects, and rain from triggering motion events and filling up the hard drive. Once you have set your sensitivity and threshold, simply move your mouse into the field of view. And now we can set the motion masking. As I mentioned earlier, if the cell is highlighted red, it is detecting motion in that cell. You change the cell clear to disable motion detection in that cell. You can also drag your mouse over and do large areas at a time. So what we are doing in this particular scene is turning off motion detection where we have trees, leaves, and sky. And as I said earlier, anywhere you have branches and leaves moving around with wind and the breeze, there's no reason to record that and fill up hard drive space. It also makes it difficult for the end user to go back and search motion events when all they're getting is leaves. Also, any cameras that are seeing sky, I also recommend that you mask that out because any lighting changes due to movement of the sun, movement of the moon, airplanes, and obviously clouds blowing by will also set off motion events with these recorders. What we have left enabled is down here in the important part of the scene. We want to see anybody come up and try to break into these vehicles or we want to see these vehicles move. Also, we have a streetscape and we have left these cells enabled so any movement along the street is also going to trigger an event. Once you have made these changes, simply right click and immediately click apply before you make any other changes in this window so that you know your masking settings and your sensitivity and threshold settings have saved. Another item I want to point out in this window is anti-dither. There's more detailed information about anti-dither on several websites. Just go to the internet, type anti-dither security cameras into the search bar and there's lots of great information you can read there. For this demonstration, I'm going to change this to three seconds. 
And the reason for that, anti-dither, is the amount of time the system is looking for motion after it has detected motion. So for example, a bird flies by the field of view, the system sees that as a motion event, and for three more seconds, it's going to look at the scene to see if there's any additional motion. If there is additional motion, it's going to keep extending the video clip. So obviously, the longer you have your anti-dither set, the more prone the system is going to be to record nuisance motion triggering. You do not want this set for zero, and even one is too low. So two to three seconds is just about right. That way, if it does film a moth, that hopefully the moth flew away and we're not continually seeing the moth flutter around the camera and fill up the hard drive. Flying insects, rain, all of those sorts of things. So this is just one more way to help with those nuisance triggerings. Other settings that you have in this window is send email, click the buzzer, snapshot tours. Um, you got lots of options here with this recorder. I do, however, recommend that you do not send email on motion recording. If this is your recorder, you're filling up your inbox with a lot of notifications from your recorder that are just going to annoy you. If you're an installer and you're doing this for an end user, the same thing. They're going to call you in about three days to come turn this feature off because their inbox is full. There's other ways to get an event with DAWA systems called IVS and I'll make um, some other videos to show you guys how to set that up. Once you have finished your sensitivity threshold and motion masking, you've set your anti-dither to two to three seconds, click apply. Save all of your settings. You can come up here to the channel drop down and move on to the next channel. At this stage, do not click all because it will send those individual motion masking settings to every single camera and they need to be set individually per camera. So do not use the copy all feature in these advanced settings. Once you're done with all your cameras, click apply, right click, you're back to the XVR main menu, right click again, and you're out to your cameras. And as you can see, um, we do have some leaves and branches swaying in the breeze and we do not have our little running men so we have successfully set the sensitivity and masked out these areas to prevent nuisance motion triggering.